sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. God said to his disciples, I give you power and I give you authority over all the devils. Not some of them. Not just the devils that make you go mad. But the devils that will not let you progress. It says, I give you authority over all the works of the enemy. I give you authority over disease, over anomalies, over abnormal circumstances. I give you authority over the manifestations of, of evil, over the scum of the earth. You have the authority because who? Because God himself, through Christ, has given it to you. Now, if you understand that he has all authority and he gives you that authority, then you need to walk in it. You need to exercise it. The second way that we have authority, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Let me say that again. It says, he that is joined to Christ is one spirit with Christ. You know what that means? It means that we are one with Christ. It means that right now, our spirit is seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. All things have been put under his feet. Sorry, all things have been put under your feet because you are in Christ. And because all things have been put under his feet, therefore they are under your feet. Amen? Do you understand what this is? Do you understand what I'm telling you? It means that everything that belongs to Christ is yours. Because you are in Christ. That is why Paul said, it is in him that I live and I move and I have my being. And nothing anybody can say or do would convince Paul to step out of Christ. Because he knew what was his in Christ. And the reason why you and I step in and step out is because we don't understand what is inside Christ. You don't understand the power that is inside Christ. Last week, the Lord showed me what was mine in Christ. And as a consequence, I am determined to be able to say like Paul, it is in him that I live and I move and I have my being. Everything is yours. Let me define what authority is. Let me not just assume that everybody understands what authority is. Authority is very simply delegated power. It is one person who has power. Amen? Giving to another person the right to exercise or use that power. When a guy walks up to you, maybe anybody here who is a... Do I have anybody here who is six foot tall and above? Darius, how tall are you? Come. Is there anybody here who is not so tall? Thank you. Thank you. No, uh, how tall are you? No, 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 I need somebody shorter. It's okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Lamont. Lamont, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lamont. So now imagine, imagine Lamont trying to stop Darius. Imagine Lamont trying to stop Darius from doing what Darius wants to do. Under normal circumstances, yeah, Darius... Darius, muscle or no muscle? <laughs> Under normal circumstances, Darius, by the time he's done with Lamont, will be feeling sorry for him. By the time he's done smashing him into a pulp, <laughs> but then, but then, but then Lamont whips out a badge. And the badge says, Federal Bureau of Investigation. You see, that badge tells Darius that Lamont has authority. So even though the person standing in front of you is only five foot four, Darius chills. Thank you, guys. You can go back to your seat. Even though the person standing in front of you, even though Lamont standing in front of Darius cannot by himself, by himself, he can't take Darius. But he doesn't need to take Darius by himself. He doesn't need to take Darius by himself because you know why? He is 
He is a member. He's an employee of the United States government. He carries the badge of the FBI. He understands that he has behind him the full weight and power of the United States Constitution. He understands that behind him are at least 25,000 FBI employees with big guns. So he doesn't, he's not intimidated by Darius. Because he knows that behind him there is much greater power. That is why the Bible tells us that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It is so that we can be bold. It is so that we can confront the works of the enemy. It's not just a pep talk. It is to reassure you that you are not alone. So instead of Darius having attitude, he says to, you know, he quietly respects himself and says to Lamon, yes, officer. And he goes and he sits down. And that is what Jesus understood. That is why Jesus never wavered. Never wavered. In the, in, in the face of the enemy. The value or the weight of any authority rests on the power that is behind that authority. If the power behind the authority is weak, then going around saying you have authority is useless. But we do not have that problem because God himself is the power behind our authority. If you understand that, you see, you will see a change in your own attitude. You know, there's a church, I'm not going to call their name. There's a church that I have met the folks in that church, and they are the most arrogant people you've ever met. They are very bold. Very, they have a lot of issues. But one thing that I give them is that they understand their position in Christ. So when you tell them you have a headache, they say, no! And you and I get irritated. But don't be irritated. Emulate the good. And what is the good? They have confidence in who they are. They refuse to accept, they refuse to submit to the kingdom of darkness. You know, most of us here do not believe that the power of God is backing us. We don't believe it. We, we think we're on our own. That is why when we have challenges, we are timid, we are afraid, we are anxious. But well, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the righteous, they are as bold as lions. Have you, have you seen a lion? Have you heard the sound of a lion's roar at the zoo? Even though you know that that lion is behind a cage. Man, when the thing roars, you're like, yo, peace. You, you respect yourself. You know, you, you respect yourself and you keep a healthy distance from the fence because perhaps by chance, the lion might somehow, should in case. It, it seems irrational. Because you see, a lion does not back down for anybody. I was watching National Geographic and I saw a lioness surrounded by a pack of hyenas. And those hyenas, if you ever see a hyena in real life, man, those things are... They're a lot bigger than we think. Their jaws, when you hear the amount of power in those jaws, there were like six or seven hyenas surrounding this lioness. The lioness was not phased. She attacked one of them, attacked the second one, and the rest backed down. One lioness, seven hyenas. The Bible says the righteous. Oh, you don't understand. It says the righteous. They are as bold as lions. We are righteous because we believe. We are righteous because we have faith. So as far as God is concerned, you are the righteous if you believe. Do you believe? Because God believes you are righteous. So you need to rise up. Touch your neighbor and say, rise up. Be bold. Be bold. Amen? The Bible says, they that know their God, Shall what? They shall be strong. Weak people don't do great things. You know that, right? Weak people don't do great things. If a man is born wealthy, if he is weak before he dies, he will lose the wealth. We look at people and say, oh, they were born into the wealth. Let's see what happens 
with their children. A lot of those people are not, they didn't get rich by being stupid. They didn't get rich by being weak. They were bold. They took risks. They went out on a limb. They weren't too worried about consequences. They knew there were consequences. They're not stupid. But they, weren't, they, they were not constrained. They were not constrained by fear. People don't start businesses if they are worried that the business will fail. When you start a business, you must have some, 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 you know, some brass ones. You know, in this economy. I, I can't, I'm a pastor, I can't say in church what I'm trying to say. So I'm, you understand what I'm saying there? Uh-huh. Only them. Okay, you guys are the holy ones now. Okay. Really? <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of us, what we need to do to move forward takes boldness. Takes boldness. And that boldness does not come from listening to self-help and motivational speakers. That boldness comes from knowing God and knowing the God that is behind you, knowing the power that stands behind you. When I left St. Louis, some people are still talking about it. How could you do that? I said, you don't know my God. If he has sent me, then I will go. And to God be the glory. I have not regretted it once. Hallelujah. We are afraid because we do not know who is behind us or, or because we do not trust who is behind us. Have you ever seen a policeman in America avoid criminals? You have? Oh, wow. Maybe Kinlock, some jacked up, some jacked up, <laughs> thank you, part of America. You know, sometimes, don't you see these tiny women in uniform? You know, there's this lady on, on, on our street when I'm dropping my kids at school. Tiny, tiny woman. You know, she's standing there, and she blows her whistle. You know, and you see these guys in, in these, you know, Yukons and, and Escalades, these huge cars. You know, and she just stands there. She just, and the guys stop. Not only is she tiny, they are in these huge cars. All they have to do is just, you know, just tap her a little bit. But she doesn't budge. You don't sense any fear in her. You know, when I see her, I, I wanted to laugh one day when, you know, she actually ran in front of, of one SUV because the SUV didn't want to stop. But then I realized that if that SUV didn't stop, the full weight of Collin County Police Department <laughs> would fall on his head. So the guy stopped. And I could see her berating him. And I was like, ah, uh-uh. ah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they are bold and they are confident. Now, where I come from, where I was born, <laughs> on the west coast of Africa, a beautiful town called Lagos. The policemen are a different story. When they hear cra- before they hear I'm, they're moving in the opposite direction. Do you know why? Because he has no confidence. He has no confidence that there is anybody behind him. Because chances are, the criminal he's trying to catch is connected to his boss. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Let's turn there. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Remember, this is part 1. There's a part 2. Next week. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power 